Hello, I'm Ron Davis. I'm professor of biochemistry and of genetics at Stanford University Medical Center. I'm going to talk to you about ME. I have been working on ME now for almost a decade. I have in the past worked on the genome project, developing technology uh, to make it cheaper and faster. But I have terminated all that work to work solely on ME CFS research with my research group. Uh, we're focused mostly on trying to figure out a cure for this disease. I'm I'm going to share my screen to, to to carry out this discussion. So I was asked to uh, consider the fact it was ME a curable disease. And the bottom line is, I believe it is. Well, first of all, you need to understand maybe what happens uh, when someone first gets uh, ME. And I refer to this as ME-CFS uh, because in the United States, it's referred to as CFS. Often a viral infection causes it, but we know that the bacterial infection can also cause it. Fungal infections, a, a parasite infection, uh, there was a big parasite infection in Norway a few years ago. But there are also reports that auto accidents and trauma can cause it. And this is consistent with maybe surgery also cause it and childbirth. Now, these are not from publications, but from me talking with patients of what started their disease in their opinion. Now, um, what is common with all of these events? Well, Activation of innate immunity is one of the common components of all those different infections. So this is something that we have been uh, intensely looking at uh, is what happens in, in innate immunity activation. Um, one thing that happens is that you uh, release the inhibition of uh, autoantibodies. And so you do see a lot of autoantibodies in the patients. But something fairly new happens, and that is upon activation of innate immunity, there's a compound called interferon alpha is produced. And when that is produced, it, it initiates something called the attaconate pathway. And that occurs in almost every cell, including in the brain. Now, a lot of researchers have, aren't familiar with this. It's something fairly new but I think it explains a great deal. In the attaconate pathway is in, the, is in the mitochondria, which are those little organelles in every cell that generates all the energy. And when the attaconate pathway is activated, it decreases AT production. A ATP is the molecule that generates all of the energy for your body. It's for your muscles, how your brain thinks, uh, all uh, many, many of the biochemistry actions are driven by a ATP. This is referred to as the attaconate shunt. And I'll show you why that's the case. Here's the normal reaction in the mitochondria. I'm just giving you the names of the compounds. Don't get lost in all this. It's really, really simple. And this is a cycle. Uh, it starts here with when you eat things like glucose, uh, the glucose is eventually brought into the mitochondria and then runs around the cycle converting different uh, compounds. And in the process of doing that, it generates the ATP. And I'm just showing you the positions where ATP is generated. But early on in the cycle, there's no ATP being generated. And so in the, when the attaconate shunt happens, and I'll show you what happens now, is that uh, it's the same cycle, 
except much of the cisaconitate, not necessarily all of it, is converted to something called a taconate. And uh, there's an enzyme that's imported into the mitochondria, and, and that uh, is called the, the uh, CAD, or it's uh, cisaconitate decarboxylase is the technical word. But mostly you just think about th this is being stolen from the, the citric acid cycle and converts to a taconate, which eventually gets converted back to where it started. So that is a shunt that does not allow you to make very much energy. Uh, this is not an absolute uh, conversion. There are some goes through, but it really robs your ability to make a lot of ATP. And that is why many people are fatigued and in fact, bed bone and have a hard time thinking. Uh, this idea of the attackinate was proposed by uh, two of my co-workers, Robert Fair and Chris Armstrong. Now, what is the evidence that the attackinate shunt is in patients? Uh, well, one thing is that we have found that the, the factor that turns it on, interferon alpha, is found in patients at a higher level than is found uh, in healthy people. What we also found is this enzyme CAD, there we can find, it's hard to find the enzyme, but we can find the RNA that codes for the CAD, and it is also found uh, in, uh, in cells in the blood uh, in MECFS patients. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean uh, that we we discovered the whole cause, but it's a real possibility. So um, it also explains a lot of the of the components of this disease. When is that is uh, why does this disease last so long? Uh, it is likely that this uh, this is a cell autonomous in the sense that all cells can have the a citric acid cycle for drive their energy. And this pathway can be turned on in all those cells uh, if it's exposed to uh, interferon alpha. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's on in every cell. So it's possible that some people have a small amount of cells being activated and that simply robs them of some of the energy, but not as much as someone who is bed bound. So the more cells that are involved, the sicker the patient's going to be. It's also possible that this energy depletion uh, can cause crashes. So sicker patients are, are more easily crashed than people that are not so sick. In fact, my son, who's very severe, says it's almost impossible not to crash. It's also possible that crashes activates innate immunity. And now if that's true, and we don't know that it's true, uh, it could explain why people were stuck in this disease. Because it's, if it activates innate immunity, you're effectively starting the disease process all over again, as though you had your first infection. And uh, this idea actually came from one of my graduate students who came down to this disease a number of years ago. And she found it was the crashes that keeps her in it. And so she did, was determined not to crash. She became bed bound. She was pretty sick. And she went for an entire year without crashing. And she got over it. That's an N of one for a cure. And I was concerned that she was just uh, better, but not over it. And she told me, no, she can run 16 kilometers a day and have no detrimental effect from that. And I think that's a good definition of being cured because most people can't do that, even healthy people. So the question is, is MECFS curable? Well, a number of patients report, as my graduate student did, had a spontaneous cure. I've, I've been very concerned about this because it might give us a clue as to what to do. Um, however, it usually doesn't, isn't that clear, and it might be simply that the process of uh, going towards the cure happened 
uh, weeks or months uh, before they actually realized that it was happening and couldn't put a finger on what they did that made it happen. Well, we could do things like block the production of alpha interferon. Uh, those, there are doctors now that are exploring that. Um, and there are a number of these things called JAK-STAT signaling pathway inhibitors that uh, activate interferon alpha. Uh, a number of patients have been trying that. Uh, one patient uh, reported to us uh, in Australia uh, reported that he was cured, uh, but we don't have any clear records of that in terms of a doctor uh, 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 reporting about him, um, but it is encouraging that maybe there was a patient that was cured. We also could look at blocking the production of this CAD, which causes the attack on H shunt. Uh, you might still be in activated innate immunity, but you wouldn't be uh, depleting your energy supply. And that might actually get you out of the disease as well. So there is an activity going on now with co my collaborators in the University of Utah looking for inhibitors of the CAD. So these are the, these are the researchers that uh, are, are working on this disease. Um, 